Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstarter Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is Kalen Karakayav, a Bulgarian-based domain investor and serial entrepreneur of edoms.com, seo.domains, and the soon-to-be-released sellstar.com, the 0% commission domain marketplace. Today, Kalen and I discuss his winding path into SEO and having founded the Bulgarian Bulgarian search engine. We also discuss what led him and his team to birth the startup business owning nearly 50,000 CCTLD domains. Kalen also shares intriguing insight about the CCTLD market and how domain investors can practically assess the value of SEO and CCTLD domains. And last but not least, Kalen discusses the release of an upcoming domain marketplace aiming to empower domain investors to realize 0% commissions. So with that, Kalen, welcome and thank you for making time to join us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Let's kick things off, Kalen. So let's briefly share with the listeners at a high level uh, a bit about yourself, who you are, your personal and professional background. Well, I used to be a professional chess player as a junior, but then I got addicted to, to the web, to building websites, doing SEO. Uh, then SEO became the main thing. It was for about almost 10 years. Then domain names started to attract me more because they were very good for SEO, but also in their own now I uh, manage a company, edoms.com. We're about 70 people. We own uh, 50,000 domain names that are some SEO, some premium, some traffic. And we, we are very focused in CCTLDs. Uh, I'm a very entrepreneur, entrepreneurial guy. I've never had a day job in my life. So <laughs> it transitions uh, straight through being a chess player, chess coach, freelancer, building websites, doing SEO to now uh, managing a company. A chess player. So wait, so how does a chess player basically go from, I, well, one, I guess, do you still play chess today? I'm assuming that you do. No, not really. I don't have the time, but it's, it's <laughs> a wonderful game. Interesting. So then, how, I mean, what got you interested in the chess? Oh, I, I started uh, training when I was eight years old and I was uh, more or less good. So. Uh, I progressed steadily into I, my top ranking in the world was number 800, which is wow. on the brink, brink of being a professional, but not that good enough. So I started to researching other options. So you, you go from playing chess, then kind of walk us through, I guess, what was that moment of going from chess into the internet world and in terms of the web, in terms of domains and SEO kind of, how did you make that pivot? I, it took a long time, years actually. I made websites about chess at first because I had a lot of uh, expertise there. So I could be, I was professional in the chess world and was learning the, the web. And then I moved to SEO. And gotcha. Now, did I guess in, with any of those developed chess sites, now did you make any affiliate income or earn any sort of income from those? Or were they just more uh, informational? They were informational, but uh, I earned good income from selling links. And then, like, who were you selling links, I guess, to, or who, who would, you know, be buying these, these types of links? The SEO industry, especially uh, the gambling, uh, the gambling industry, they do a lot of SEO and they always search for games websites to buy links from because it's very related to, say, casino. So there are a lot of buyers for links from uh, games websites. Now, did you know that going into building chess sites or was this just something that you kind of stumbled up on? Oh, I had no idea. I stumbled wow. up on it. And so what was your first thought in terms of, I guess, when you were approached by someone who, I mean, did they, did they say, hey, I, I want to, you know, have my, my site, have your site linked to my site or kind of what was that backstory? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It was more than 10 years ago. Uh, it was not a chess website, but one, one of my later websites, but still a long time ago, more than 10 years. And uh, it, it had a, property something page and a property agency came and and said uh, okay we'll pay you 60 dollars so if you put uh, our link for one year and i was basically like bring it on free money <laughs> <laughs> the, the site is already there so <laughs> uh, exactly so then... and, and it was so easy it was so easy and <laughs> all the money came up front and it was like wow this is the, the dream business of my life there's no friction at all 
And so did, did then I guess the that was kind of a light bulb moment for you then that you just I guess uh, did you start building more sites or was it you were just trying to find uh, more ways to to advertise links and and advertising banner ads and stuff. Yeah, well, the, in the beginning, the problem was that uh, to have a powerful website where you can sell links, you need other websites to link to it. Mm. And uh, of course, this happens with quality content and time, but you really need a lot of quality content and a lot of time or to be, you know, to have connections in an industry. So it's, it was very slow, very slow at the beginning. Uh, I, I, I was going to, to meet uh, friends for coffee for two hours just to get them to put a link at my site so that's how slow actually it was <laughs> building the first links and the first uh, authority there was actually another light bulb moment be before the one when i sold my first links which was in bulgaria there was a very big free hosting it it it, it did give subdomains and a mm -hmm. free hosting uh, with just static websites it was a long time ago and so uh, i i found if someone deleted their website on the free hosting I could register the same subdomain and get a page with already links pointing to it. And this was the first light, light bulb moment about uh, how we can create value out of nothing. Just uh, there are links pointing to, to, to some web resource that doesn't exist, even not a domain. And actually, you can, you can rebuild it and have uh, extract the value of the links. So this was maybe the, the biggest aha moment for me. Uh, so... Someone had a site. It was on a subdomain for whatever reason, unknown to man. They let that subdomain go. Um, obviously, it kind of, I guess, goes back to being available to the open market. You come along, figure out there was a site that was built on it, and then I guess you basically redirect that that site well, or that subdomain, or how, or did you actually build a site on it? it I had to build a site on it because the platform did not allow any redirection. Mm. But but uh, but still, you could put links. And then back in the days, Google didn't have any penalties whatsoever, so you could just put any links, and they would push any website up in the rankings. Now, how did you go about finding out how a I guess a subdomain had a had a site on it previously? The mother domain, the big free hosting, had its uh, DNS. Uh, zone it's allowed uh, axfr or like the zone transfer so i could get a list of all the subdomains and then i could crawl them one by one there were fifty thousand with zinu and uh <laughs> and then they, they gave 404 or something and uh, maybe 200 or something that were deleted and had uh, some value interesting so you just did this on, on a daily basis then it, it was such an old platform that there were uh, a lot already expired not so many were expiring mm. so i didn't like drop catch subdomains but got it so then you use the zone file then to kind of gain access or visibility into to what was dropping uh, essentially I, I i didn't know anything technically back then so basically there was a third party <laughs> service that had parsed all a big uh, zone files in bulgaria and i got it from them it was uh, available on google so i didn't actually know back then what a zone transfer was or Someone else had already done the work. And then now in terms, so are you a software developer or, or no? No, no, no. I'm pretty technical these days, especially about things related to domains, but I am I cannot write code. <laughs> what, what I know is HTML and that, that's it. <laughs> so you go from there, you begin to get into, uh, you're building these sites, you're selling links. Then I guess you make the you make the full pivot from chess into I'm assuming then SEO at that point because that's just kind of where things you figured. Hey, I could probably make more money learning about SEO and learning how to apply it. Um, and so, like, what sorts of things did you get into in terms of SEO? You know, kind of walk us through kind of what what happened from you developing and selling uh, links all the way up to, I guess, the launch of the uh, Bulgarian search engine. Well, what what happened is uh, I tried to to make a, a balance between SEO clients, so working as an agency, selling links to other uh, agencies or clients directly, and having uh, my own project, so that I have something mm. that is. Uh, that I can experiment on. So the, the client thing and the, the link selling thing especially were very cash positive. But my own projects, because I was a very experienced entrepreneur, they were just losing money. So <laughs> there was a balance for a few years. Uh, one of my own projects 
actually the, the latest one before I moved into domain names was a, I wanted to make a Bulgarian search engine that uh, would not actually be a search engine. It would use Google underneath, but it will have a very useful interface. So like say Google and upgrade this interface. For example, if you, if you search for a big brand, it will, let's say the biggest email provider in Bulgaria, it will directly take you there. Just you want, you will save this click and the results and everything, you will just save time. So it was very useful to be a homepage. So it was like a homepage with a search and the search was trying to guess what you wanted to do and take you to Google if there was no better thing to do. But uh, otherwise, if it would guess, it, it would take you right to another website or search in another website. For example, if you, if you type in YouTube Madonna, it would search for Madonna in YouTube. Like it would just try to, to guess, not with an AI, just with a simple predefined rules, what, you, what your intent is. And it, it, was, it was going well for a while. It had 15,000 users a day at, at its peak. But uh, awesome. the problem is that I di- didn't have a reli- reliable traffic ge- generator. I was extracting traffic from Google by indexing my own search results. So then some Google updates came and the organic traffic faded. So, uh, and I c- couldn't find any investors, which was the problem. Maybe with the people I know today, I could have found an investor and really tried to, to get traffic that was non-organic, but didn't work back in the day. But uh, it was good because then I met for the first time uh, my current investor that invests into into Edoms. So nice. So then, so I mean, you had fifteen thousand daily users. Now, most of those, I'm I'm assuming, probably lived there. It was more much of a local search engine. So it was com- completely local. Yeah. Now, what was the? I guess what what was the name of that site? It was napret.bg, which means forward in Bulgarian. I guess in Bulgaria, is that is that more of a common thing to see probably what the CCTLD uh, dot BG versus a dot com or any other TLD? Yeah, almost every big website uses dot BG. It, it brings a lot of trust. The people are used to it. Uh, the only reason you would not want to use dot BG if you're uh, doing something uh, shady, because in dot BG, you have to identify with an ID. So if you're doing something shady, you wouldn't want that. So uh, adult websites and stuff like this, uh, they use .com. But the rest, they use uh, also torrent sites. Use, we have a lot of torrent sites in Bulgaria. They use .com. But uh, the rest, they use .bg. But .bg is a bit expensive. It's about 30 euro per year. So most small business use .com or whatever they can find. .org, .net, .eu is quite popular also. So. That's interesting. So because of the price, then the price kind of drives folks to use dot com. Um, but yes. then I guess the dot BG, though, probably has uh, a bit more credibility of being local. Yes, though. yes. B- because it has no, no, no spam websites uh, right. use dot BG because it's too expensive. So the dot, dot BG carries all the trust and dot com is just just fine. Ah, so then you go from the Bulgarian search engine, and then when was your next aha moment of, you know, being able to transition from the search engine into EDOMS? Well, the thing is that uh, I had built quite a good team, but uh, six, seven people maybe, which most of the team is still with the company today. The problem was that there were no developers in the team. So we couldn't do anything <laughs> technically challenging. I mean, we always had to rely on third parties, tools. So it was a big problem that was uh, stopping our growth. So then I, uh, I, I didn't meet my uh, co-founder then uh, because uh, we had known each other for many years. But then he quit his job in the, the previous uh, company mm-hmm. where he was something like a CTO. And, uh, and then uh, he joined my team and uh, we founded actually the, the company. We founded the company when we found, found a very small investor, but still investment. The investor that we somehow convinced that uh, <laughs> uh, SEO domains are actually quite profitable, regardless of the actual potential that we have to become a very big startup like a unicorn or something. We, we already had revenue before anything, before having a company, before having a product, before having a website. We already had revenue because we... We were filtering domains, registering them, and reselling them. Almost no startups kept revenue, so this was something that uh, caught the, the attention of the investors, and uh, they they decided to give us a shot with the uh, their smallest package, which which was uh, fifty thousand euro. 
which is a very Thanks. tiny investment, but it really helped us uh, just take a breath and make a company, get an office, get more people, like put the things on the right uh, on the right track. Right. Now let's take a step back. So, because one of the things that's kind of in my mind, at least kind of hearing your journey throughout this, I guess now, do you consider yourself a domain investor? Well, now, yes. But when we started the company, we didn't uh, look at it that way. We, we, we wanted, really wanted it to be a tech company, but it has turned uh, a bit into a sales company now. I mean, it's still, uh, <laughs> we, we have a lot of high tech stuff, but it's mostly internal now to, to help our own uh, domain catching and, and selling and evaluating. So then prior to Edom's, like how many domains did you own up to starting it? Ah, well, we had a PBN, like private blog network. So mm-hmm. and, uh, domains made in Sally for linking of maybe 2000 or something. So we already had some domains, but, uh, but we didn't have the concept of uh, investing. All the domains we had were built into blocks and we were selling links. So it was a, a different thing uh, that then we, we didn't uh, think of the domain as uh, an object that is uh, worth something without the website. Wait, and it, wait, 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 wait. You, did you say 200 or 2,000? 2,000. <laughs> Hold on. You had 2,000 websites. Yeah, but they were just WordPress blogs with three, two or three articles each. Ah, so it was, okay. It wasn't such, such a big deal. But it, okay. it, it took like a, a day to create 10 websites. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm like, wait, you just told me that you weren't a developer. You didn't know how to code. So I'm like, how did you go from zero to 2,000 websites? <laughs> and so you were using WordPress then. Yeah, yeah, and I have a very had a very dedicated team who weren't scared of a lot of repetitive work, so they were just install WordPress after WordPress and write content and upload it. And so, how do I mean? How do you keep up with two thousand websites though? Like, and make sense of it all? It's kind of a mess, but uh, you <laughs> buy shared hosting, uh, which and you can then put uh, fifty or hundred uh, websites on the same shared hosting, and there are also a thousand others, so Google cannot easily find you, single you out mm. uh, to, to penalize you, and uh, you try to hide your hoist and everything, which is now easier after GDPR came into force, much easier. Right. But, but, but back then it was a real problem, actually, who is very, very, it was very hard to hide your hoist or make it diverse enough. So then even with 2000 sites, you really would not have, you probably consider yourself more of a domain developer than you would a domain um, investor. Well, we just called it SEO and link selling back then. Mm. So we didn't like domains were not in the picture yet. Uh, the, the, the moment that domains actually were in the picture much more than before, because first we only uh, evaluated do- domains on the basis of SEO. Right. But th- then, then we had a very lucky chance, which was that I found completely by accident about some promos in Sweden. And uh, we registered half a million Swedish domains for very, very small money. So, like, <laughs> cents. Uh, and uh, yeah, th- there, were, there were some promos, ap- apparently, that the Swedish registry had an argument. In, in the end of the, the argument, they decided for, for, for an experiment to sell the domains for zero, some promo period, through certain registrars. I learned by this entirely by accident, just browsing for, through uh, registrar pli- price list. And I uh, called a, <laughs> a registrar and said that they had a mistake. They had a zero price in the price list. And they said, no, no mistake. It, it's really zero. And uh, uh, they had some fixed fees. So, so we paid something. It wasn't for free, but it was uh, we still uh, the first we earned some money, good money, six-figure money. But, but also, but also uh, the other very important thing was that we had to choose half a, half a million domain names to register. And the good domains for SEO that had any links were only, let's say, 5,000, 10,000. I don't remember, but a very small fraction. So we had just by force, we were forced to learn very quickly uh, how to make use of premium and traffic domains, because otherwise we would have lost this, uh, this opportunity to, to get the free domains. We, we, we had to register something. So, so, <laughs> so we experimented with traffic and with uh, premiums. And then uh, after we had all of these domains, we, we just had to list them everywhere. So we... Uh, created accounts at Tidu Afternic. Actually, this was, I think, the, the first port that I ever created an Afternic account. We had a Tidu account from, I think, a, a bit before, but 
uh, so a, a, everything and, and then i i see that not a lot of domains were selling while just staying in parking crew and so we moved on to dan and then sold more with a better landing page so we, we learned actually a a and b of uh domain investing and selling with, uh, with a free <laughs> resource of uh, half a million domains, which was uh, pure luck. Got it. What was that extension? It was uh, SE and NU, so the Swedish extensions. Mm. So you thought it was an accident that they put them out there for zero dollars. You figure out, hey, this isn't an accident. And then you go all the way in with a half a yeah. million registrations. Yeah, it, it was not half a million at one time. There was 100,000 this month and then 100,000 next month. But Gotcha. In, so in then, so, of course, so, 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 five to six months, then you probably ramped up then. Yes, yes. Se- seven months, actually. So I see somewhat, or maybe it wasn't a strategy, but it seems like it was a strategy of let's purchase these in bulk in terms of the first 100,000. So was it one of those, I'll purchase 100,000, see if we can sell them. If we sell, then we'll purchase another 100,000. No, no, it, it was not like that. It was, uh, it was super clear that it's going to be profitable uh, because they were just too cheap. <laughs> uh, so uh, w- w- we did some thinking before buying the first 100,000, but then we were just like, okay, let's just don't be stupid and get them all because uh, it, there's no way that we can lose money on this. Right. Well, and that's what I was, I'm sitting here thinking about that and I'm going, man, if, if that was the strategy, then it's one of those things that you could have tipped someone off just by seeing, you know, that many bulk registrations. Yeah. Over time. I, I, we, we attracted attention. Yeah. Yeah. We, we attracted attention, but the, the promo was only in two registrars and it was not so public and mm. no one actually was bold enough to, to register as much as they could people were registering like a thousand two thousand names right. in sweden so so they were taking advantage a lot of people knew but uh for some reason well you know in sweden people are generally rich they, they don't have their back against the wall so they don't try to be super 100 percent effective in what they do so probably they thought stuff or oh, that would be hard to manage or what yeah. will the registry think? And we were just we ask we ask the, the registrar, will the registry be okay with with this? And they said, well, if there's no abuse, there will be no problem. So we just we had nothing to lose. So that is interesting. So then now, do you think a lot of it also played into the fact that it was a CCTLD and not necessarily a legacy TLD? Well, in GTLD, such such a thing cannot happen, of course. Domain right. will just abuse it to the roof. Although there, there was a, a, I think five or six years ago, there was a promo at Dotsters for one dollar or one one fifty registration that was not limited, <laughs> and uh, I I know uh, domainers that abused this. They also had transfers, transfer for for one fifty or something, right? Uh, so losing a lot of money, but uh, yeah, this was a single case. I don't know of any other. Yeah, so uh, Sweden registry that has oh, every Swedish company already has a domain internet. Penetration is extremely high, so the registry just wanted to just uh, jumble the market up a bit, like create some some new incentives, some new growth. They want to sell to sell the domains for free, and actually, and actually, they they also earned money because uh, of the we we're, we didn't renew a lot of domains. Maybe we renewed one thousand oh, half a million or just, just the one that has traffic revenue. But then the domains when they were expiring, they entered the drop list. Mm-hmm. And they caught a lot of, which is public drop list in Sweden, and they uh, caught a lot of attention. So, uh, so, so actually, uh, I think about ten percent of the domains got re-registered again by other people. So the registry also increased their their registration number. Gotcha. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So it was free the first time around. You essentially had a three hundred sixty-five day runway uh, to do a couple things. One is to figure out which domains had traffic and how to monetize that traffic, or you develop those domains and you know, just by sure nature of developing, you hope to develop into uh, traffic and monetize that somehow. And then the other is for the registrar, they're kind of like, hey, great. These people probably aren't going to uh, renew these because we're going to lift the price. And so those that don't, then they, they're likely going to go to auction, uh, which is definitely falling oh, right into the hands. There are no auctions. In CCTIDs, you, you can't do auctions. 
it's a bit of different type of uh, policy there because mm. uh, the registrant has full power, you know, in, in .com it's more like you lease the domain from the registrar and the registrar is the true owner. Right. But, 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 but in CCTLD, as a registrant, you are the true owner. You know, at any time you can go to the registry and say, I don't like this registrar, let's change it. You know, for example, huh. in UK, you have an account directly with the registry and in, in Denmark also, and in many other countries, uh, you, you can just, so at, you... At, at, at any time you can bypass the registrar and do whatever you want. So in Europe, it's like a different mentality. And, uh, and in, in most European countries, you are not allowed to, to keep and auction the domains as a, as a registrar. Even if you are allowed, it's kind of a gray area and no one does it. Hmm. So, so then you can pretty much drop. choose each registrar then or whoever you want, right? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. But uh, the, 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 the point is that 100% of the domains drop. So the, there are no these go, like GoDaddy auctions and Namejet, right. kind of dot auctions. All of these don't exist in the CCTODs. The pre-drop auctions, the pre-release, they, 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 they don't exist. So you knew going in then out of that half a million or so, you knew going in that you probably weren't going to renew most of those. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, we knew all along. How did you manage all of those? How did you figure out which ones were of value? And then how did you figure out which ones weren't? And then just kind of cut bait and let those go? Uh, We let go of almost anything. Because if the domain was already available, when we register it, then it wasn't some super important name. And uh, so for the names, because we don't understand the Swedish market at all, uh, even after all of these domains and sales, uh, we don't speak <laughs> Swedish and so on. Uh, so uh, we decided to let go of all of the names. And for, from the SEO names, we kept maybe very few, maybe 100. And the uh, ones that had uh, traffic more than the renewal, we kept, of course. Uh, traffic revenue uh, and uh, yeah the, the, the plan was pretty simple uh, we we list all the domains in parking crew see which have traffic and then the ones that don't have traffic we move to done to to get better sales landing we did a buy now for all the domains for, for 450 euro which was kind of the like the golden uh, golden points for this country and this quality of domains which was of course not very high because they were available and registered, basically. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people, maybe 30% of the, the sales were buy now. The rest were like, make a lower offer and then we negotiate. So don't, don't negotiate. But a lot of sales for 100 euro, 200, 300, 450. And yeah, it, uh, it worked pretty, pretty well. So what was the time frame on this? Like, when did this all take place? Uh, in 2017. So not not that long ago. I mean, a, a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, but th- th- that's the moment that that actually we we be, we be, we became from an SEO company into a domain company because before we were an SEO company that bought domains in order to to help us and other SEOs, and then right. we became a domain company that buys SEO domains and other domains. Right, right. Now, in in most cases, so. You, when you make that that pivot from being an SEO company really to a domain company, I guess the the obvious question is why not go after .dot com domains? Why specifically focus on CCTLDs? Well, it's just a matter of uh, of a way you can make your breakthrough. You know, when you enter the domain industry in 2017, you're very late to to the party. <laughs> you know that. Uh, the, the big the big domainers the the dot com domainers they start in the two thousands or even earlier so uh, we were pretty late for dot com but uh, what what we could not do in timing we did with uh, good technology with drop catching you know dot com drop catching is even the domains that uh, that are not in the the registrars that auction them like go they even the ones that drop you know that's fighting with uh, drop catch comments snap names is a, is a lost cause if you're a newbie in the industry so and also needs a lot of capital not just not just technology uh you need this uh, hundreds of icon registrar so we knew this this is not possible uh not our battle so but in cctl this it's it's different because uh, registrar accreditations are cheap also in in CCTLDs, uh, 
because of the smaller market, not everyone understands the value of SEO of uh, SEO domains. In a CCTLD, it's possible sometimes to hand register a domain that costs uh, that has value of thousands for SEO. It's completely hmm. impossible in .com. In .com, maybe you can can register a domain that has a hundred dollar SEO value. If you're extremely lucky, more likely you will not find anything good at all, even after going through hundreds of deleted domains. So in CCTLDs, there are proportionally more good domains for SEO because if you look at the US, then Universities have .edu, the government has .gov, but mm -hmm. in, let's say in Bulgaria, the government uses .bg, the universities use .bg. There are a lot of uh, national structures, government agencies, NGOs, and other powerful websites that use .bg, and all of these expire eventually. So in, in .bg, you can catch very high quality domains. And if you add 200 countries in the world, or let's say 150 if you exclude some third world countries that don't really have a lot of developed internet and links, but at least 150 countries with each with their own government, own government structure, all the agencies, uh, all of their big media and all of this, and it, they expire. So, so there are a lot, of, a lot of domains that are good for SEO expiring daily in CCTOD is actually more than in ComNet and or combined for sure. Really? Even, even, even though the overall number of ComNet org versus CCTO, this is about the same. And uh, of course, the premium domains in .com have higher cumulative value than the premiums in CCTODs, but with the SEO, it's the other way around. Interesting. So then how many CCTODs are, are you or your company, how many are you all invested in? Well, almost every country in the world. There are some countries that have restrictions. Mm -hmm. You have to be, well, you, if you have to be local, there's usually some trusty, but uh, sometimes they ask to be uh, local and have a local company with the exact name of the domain or a trademark or something very hard. So this, this, in these ones, we cannot work, but, uh, or some countries are not friendly to, to domain or something like or Australia is often cited. Uh, a country that is not friendly to, to domainers, you're not allowed to sell domains officially and all, all of that. To, to keep them for resale. But uh, in most countries we work, I think we have uh, domains from more than 150 countries. Or we have domains from countries that I never thought we'd ever have a domain, but let's say one good domain expires and then we have one. So it's a lot of monitoring R&D going on because all of these countries have entirely different rules that, about, uh, about the domain lifecycle, how they drop, about how to become a registrar. So the the manual work that uh, that my team does it, we have 70 people for a reason <laughs> the the work that goes into actually figuring out the details in each cctl this making registrars keeping the communication with each with each registry and uh, figuring out uh, how to get a list of the domains in this country even a partial list so so a database then evaluation uh, then drop catching in a specific different different uh, system because every country is different. If if you, if you can drop catch domains in Co UK and then try to do it in D, for example, in Germany, mm -hmm. the Co UK experience will not help you at all. It's like starting from scratch all over again. Then really? you go into Italy and you start all over again. Then you go into Spain and you start all over again. Yeah, because each they most of the countries they use they do use EPP like the dot com right but 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 they they drop the domains in a different way because EPP does not specify how you, how you drop the domains and also they they can they can modify the EPP however they like most most of them use some slightly modified versions of EPP so, so it's truly really like the wild wild west then I mean it's kind of like any any rule every rule can be applied. Oh yes, oh yes. It's uh, I I have seen things that uh, I, I have never thought uh, are possible in some countries. <laughs> for for example, like having no downtime, so no. Uh, usually, when a domain expires, there's some transition period, grace, redemption, pending delete, whatever it's called, or a mixture of those. But then you have no website, so so the owner knows that something happened and can renew the domain. But 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 there are some small countries that are too that do everything manually and they're too lazy to kill the DNS. 
So you, you have a huge website running and doesn't know that the domain expires and then next day it's ours, <laughs> for example. Wow. <laughs> Cra crazy wow. stuff. I mean, I mean liter literally crazy stuff in some of, some of the smaller countries. <laughs> so, so, so then now you, you basically go from 2000 websites, then you start doing the SEO uh, dot domains. Now, what, what's interesting to me is in terms of, so EDOMS now, is it, I guess, is it accredited or is it a registrar? It, it, it is a registrar in 60 countries and ICANN, yes. Okay, okay. So it is an, an, an accredited registrar. So then you go from 2,000 domains to half a million Swedish domains that you let most of those expire. And now how many domains do you all own today? About uh, 50,000. About 50,000. And that's between, so I guess kind of walk us through the difference between edoms.com and seo.domains. Like, are they that different or are they kind of one in the same? So edoms is our uh, mother brand. So it's the, the mother uh, company. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's basically a collection of other brands. Edoms itself does, does not do anything specific apart from just getting and selling domains. So it does not offer directly any service. Uh, SEO domains uh, is, is our brand, which holds the 15, more like 20,000 SEO domains that we have. So we have 40% SEO value domains in our portfolio. Uh, and uh, these are in SEO.domains. It's, it's a separate brand with a separate website that uh, uh, does a lot of uh, business with the SEO industry. And the SEO industry basically does not know uh, that this is a part of EDOMS. They just know SEO domains. They search for domains. They buy domains and so on. So they, uh, And the drop catching uh, process and acquiring domains, it's, uh, it's underground. So it, we do it internally. And then... To, in SEO domains, we show the SEO value domains and the, the rest we list in all possible marketplaces. And at eDOMS, we also have some other uh, services that are not core, core features, except for sales trial, which is uh, something that we will we'll invest a lot in. So roughly about 15,000 domains then are at SEO.domains. And I mean, like what, if you had to give a value to, to those domains, like what would be that value if you were to say, hey, if I sold all of these today, I'd probably get uh, maybe a million, a little over a million? Well, if you add, if you add up all the prices in uh, SEO.domains, you will get about uh, $2 million. Okay. However, uh, this is not uh, liquid because let's say mm. one domain is about uh, casino, one domain is about pets, one domain is about travel, and another domain is about insurance. So you need to find an insurance buyer for the insurance domain, a pets buyer for the pets domain. No one who has a business in pets will uh, buy a super expensive casino domain because it's super oh, yeah. expensive because it's very valuable to a casino business owner or affiliate. So it's, uh, it's like, it's interesting because at the same time, they are market prices. So we don't sell it. There's no such thing as end user prices in the SEO domains business. Why is that? Well, because there are so many domains every day in GoDaddy auctions, Namejet, with other private buyers like us that you, you have a lot of uh, choice. For example, if you want to buy a pets domain, okay, we have maybe 50 pets domains, but there are maybe five more in GoDaddy auctions and 10 more with other sellers. So we, you always have a choice. Uh, you, you, we cannot inflate the price like with premium domains that is one unique domain and someone wants it. So the price can be 20x what we bought it. So we cannot do this because it's, uh, the name doesn't matter, which makes the domain less unique and more of a commodity. But it's, but it's also, there, there is a price uh, below which every domain would sell because it would be just, the links would be too good for the price. And we are trying, we are trying to, to price a bit above that so that let's say, mm. Not anyone would buy it, but let's say anyone in the same industry would buy it. A actually, uh, the domains we sell are maybe a bit more expensive than some of the auctions, maybe a little bit uh, more expensive than, say, go the auctions. But the thing is that you save a lot of time because these are buy now prices comparing to, to bidding at an auction. So it's a, it's a time saver. So it's normal that we may be a bit more expensive, but it's like not uh, even twice as expensive, maybe like 20 or 30% more expensive than the average auction price. 
and also some auction prices uh, when they are two two committed buyers they go crazy high much higher than our price <laughs> so uh which can happen for a very good seo domain just like it can happen for a very good premium but of course premium domains and an auction is a stupid idea <laughs> okay, i think everyone would agree but, uh, so our domains they are priced at uh, two million collectively but it's impossible to find a single buyer uh, not for two millions, not even for a million. We just need to find a pet buyer for all our pets domains, a casino buyer for all our casino domains, and all, all of that. So it's uh, we are selling uh, maybe about a few hundred domains a month, which is not bad because they are, after all, kind of liquid. I mean, there's a lot of, there's larger demand and supply for SEO domains, especially for powerful ones. Right. The, the, the thing is that if everyone would be okay with the price, and the niche will match well and the market because for example if you're in the us you won't buy a co uk domain because mm. then uh, you screw up uh, your uh, geo targeting of your website google will rank you in the uk more than in the us so <laughs> so you should match uh, if, if it's the same language you should try to match the country of course uh, if it's different language then then it doesn't matter for example if you uh, if you're in the US doing SEO and you buy a domain from Bulgaria, it's perfectly fine. And if you're in Bulgaria and you buy a .com from the US, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But if the language is the same, then Google does some tricks with the domain extensions uh, to determine where to rank. And then, then it's better to, to keep with your country. Interesting. So I want to go back then. So you said it's roughly around about 2 million. Now, out of those 15 or so thousand domains... Uh, like how much traffic are we talking about that these domains, you know, receive on a monthly basis, or even, I guess by now you've been doing it, um, a couple of years. So like annualized, I guess kind of, how uh, many... I, I can say on a daily basis, actually, because okay. that's how I look at, uh, the... uh, we have about, uh, 130,000 daily traffic in our domains, but it's not just SEO domains, it's SEO and traffic. I don't really know how it's distributed because I look at the mm -hmm. parking stats together. But let's say it's the SEO domains are maybe slightly more, although the highest traffic domains are obviously, uh, right. are ob or obviously the traffic, traffic domains like uh, right. sites and so on, but uh, that usually don't have a lot of links. So a lot Got of it. traffic, not so many links. And in the SEO domains, it's, you can have a, thousands of links and not have any traffic wait it's, what uh, yeah it's, it's very strange Be because traffic is very correlated to the eight to the time the website was active so it if a website was active in 2007 and it has a lot of links most of uh -huh. the links will st still be here for example if the link is in bbc they will never remove it so you have all this authority and all these links but uh but the traffic if if Everyone since 2007 knows that the website is no longer active. And all the places that have links, even in BBC, even in big media and everywhere, they are buried in a very, very old articles that are very deeply buried in the structure of each website. Okay. So you won't have a lot of visits. Hell, you have maybe a few visits a day, 10 visits a day, but uh, nothing compared to... Uh, nothing like know. thousands or hundreds of thousands, tens or hundreds of thousands. Well, it's, I think our highest traffic website has, has, has maybe 3,000 a day or something. Okay. It's hard to have uh, because we'll, we don't have some beautiful typo.com domains. And so, on. <laughs> so, so, so it's, these are long gone. But we have domains that were a torrent website, uh, movie streaming website. These have a lot of traffic. Also, some websites that were used as redirection services and all of those, they have traffic. We have, for example, the domain of a uh, mobile operator that used to operate in Nigeria, and uh, they had uh, 20 million clients. <laughs> so you imagine that it still has traffic 10 years later. Right. It still has a lot of traffic. That is interesting. Yeah. At, at least uh, on, on average, uh, two people a day write me about a SIM card lost or needing to be replaced or something, even though the, the mobile <laughs> operator is gone for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. You said that you sell a couple of hundred or a few hundred domains um, every month. Now, how do you go about replacing those domains? Oh, that's, the, that's not the problem. The problem is that we don't sell enough because we catch more than a thousand per month. Now that we got uh, into uh, dot, dot, now we do also dot com mm -hmm. uh, since uh, two months. And now we, we catch about 2,000 a month uh, SEO domain names. 
and we catch 2,000 and we sell 500. And this is not good, you know, because we will, these domains, uh, they have to be sold. You know? right. you, you earn nothing by, by waiting there. They are slowly right. degrading when they lose links and so on. So, uh, huh. so we have some serious sales problem. So then from that standpoint, I'm assuming then there has to probably be some sort of algorithm then that bases that you're likely having to change your price, knowing that, you know, you let's say the the um, as fresh, if you will, or as new. So a domain name hits your platform day one. It has X, Y, Z price. Well, if it doesn't sell by month three, then likely that price has to come down so that you can actually get rid of it. Cause like you said, with that domain aging, it, it's yeah. kind of playing against you. Yeah. But the thing is that no one has time for this in reality. So uh, <laughs> what, what we actually do is that if we see a domain is not sold in one year, we consider restoring it and doing something by selling links. So it, 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 it makes more sense uh, this way than the price. If it the, the price is not the problem. Mm. Usually for a domain, it's the the problem is that uh, our buyers they are very uh, unfamiliar with CCTLDs. A lot of them in the are in the US where they may have never heard of CCTLD in their life. So uh, it's very hard to convince them that CCTLDs are just as easy to to operate. Well, in most cases, with some exceptions, are just as easy to operate and as uh, other domains. That's that's the the big problem. Because uh, do you know how many people in the U.S. believe that they cannot own a U.K. domain? That there are yeah. some restrictions, and right. it, it's just and it it, it has been. Uh, I I don't know if there ever were restrictions for co U.K. domains for ownership, but at least in the last ten years, there there are known. Right, which kind of speaks to what you were saying about each uh, country having its own set of rules, and so. It's kind of one of those things. It's not a you know universal or common law, if you will, in terms of the the rules of engagement of how to go to own. Because in one yeah. CCTLD, you could likely, I mean, it's pretty. It's probably as easy as just going typing into a browser and you're able to order it, and that domain is yours. Versus another, you got to have either a representative there, you got to have an address, you got to jump through all these different hoops. So, and on top of that, like you said, it, it kind of comes back to how many people even know they exist? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. But 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 they do exist. And actually, co UK and org UK and UK domains, if you combine them, there are more than .org. So they, really? They, they, yeah, really, it's .org. I think about ten million, and the UK combines are uh, twelve million. And so DE is sixteen million or something. DE is mm. bigger than .net. Let's say it's very unlikely that an American domainer will ever enter the DE market. You have to speak German, you know, you have to know uh, local culture and local brands and geographical names. And it's, it's a whole other thing. And it's very hard, actually, for us because we are very, very good in drop catching in, in a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. but we cannot actually uh, maximize the, the revenue from this because we don't know the local languages. And let's say a very beautiful keyword, uh, let's say furniture or or fashion or some top top keyword can expire in a local language and we'll never know even though we have the domain in our database because we have almost all existing domains in our database but if something expires let's say fashion in lithuanian expires in lithuania.lt we'll never know why because to know actually we have to put every keyword into translate every day and in the cctlds there are maybe 100,000 expiring domains per day it's just not possible. It's, it's, so it's uh, super hard to overcome this uh, language barrier. Mm. And it's, it's very strange because uh, in every country, for example, no one catches domains in Lithuania apart from the Lithuanians and us. No one catches domains in Serbia apart from the Serbians and us. No one catches domains in, in say, uh, Czech Republic than the Czech and us. And it's like this in every small, smaller country. So it's between us and the locals. And we have a lot of uh, drop catching experience and we usually have a registrar and we have a good database but the locals have the very better uh, very good knowledge of the market they know the language perfectly while we don't know it at all so it's kind of this uh, 
this battle between two two sides that are each quite uh, quite far away from being perfect. You know, we lack a lot and they lack a lot, but uh, still we get some and they get some. So it's the equi- equilibrium is is maintained. Yeah. Well, in some local countries, sometimes the locals just stay activate and they kick us out of the drop catching game by registering a lot of registrars or knowing something that we know. So and not in all countries, it's easy. Uh, but uh, in many countries, we are we are a big player, even though we are very much behind in, in know-how and local know-how, especially. But still, it's worth doing because it's low-hanging fruit. That's the interesting thing, that it, that you're thriving, you're making um, a living in, CC, in the CCTLD market, uh, you know, where most, if you think about just domaining at a broad or at a macro level, most are going to say, ah, just stick to the dot com. There's no money to be made or had in CCTLD markets. But you're living proof that that's actually not true. For sure, because we do maybe 90 percent of our revenue comes from CCTLD and it's uh, six figures per month. Uh, and, and it's uh, our, our metrics like uh, our, our sale through and all of all of this. I don't know them exactly, so I don't want to give any information mm-hmm. that they t- turn out to be wrong. They also change, but it's uh, at least a few times better than the, the average domainer in the dot com market. But, but the thing is that really it's not a game for everyone. You either go all in like uh, we do with 70 people team, investing a lot into a database, investing a lot into accreditations. We have we do so much drop catching that we have more than $100,000 only in deposits. <laughs> because we do drop catching in so many TLDs and registrars and you have to have a deposit everywhere. And, and, and not uh, not like uh, fifty dollars because you, you may have a few domains one after another, then you run out of money, uh, which <laughs> is the worst thing that that a domain has been identified, evaluated. You know, we should drop catch, and then we drop catching, and the query goes through and says not enough money in the account. So, <laughs> so it should never happen. So we should keep all, all of this money everywhere. So we just one hundred thousand for for deposits, which is insane because we, we could use this money for growth. Uh, right. They very well, but we just have to keep them there. So uh, a lot of these uh, accreditations, a lot of uh, we use, of course, every possible uh, registrar API too, and uh, we use everything. Of, of course, sometimes we be at auctions, but we try to avoid auctions because auctions is fighting against the market, while we prefer to have a technological fight with the, with the drop catching is uh, the other yeah, yeah. better. Yeah, you prefer to 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 be a bit under that radar um, and, and not on anyone's radar and <laughs> versus you're there on somebody's radar and then it just becomes a bidding war that, you know, drives the price sky high. Yeah, yeah if it goes into a bidding war, we, we don't push it That's mm. because the, this money can be invested better into better drop catching, right. more developers, better databases better evaluators evaluation is actually i think our main uh, power maybe 55 percent of our revenue comes from seo domains right and e- evaluation is extremely important there because if you evaluate well then you can get a, a domain for ten dollars and sell it for a thousand so like how do you even evaluate a domain we have 15 people who evaluate all day long Gotcha. And are they, I'm assuming that they're evaluating then on just attributes of the domain, um, how many links or how old? Uh, well, well, these are all things that you can get automatically. And we use it for initial sorting. And then the 15 people, they just uh, look at the data into a custom software that, that is used only in the company, which brings all the data that we can into a single screen. And then in another screen, they can uh, open Ahrefs or another tool to, to look at the backlinks. Right. An experienced evaluator can evaluate a bad domain in a few in a few seconds and discard it, and a good domain maybe in thirty seconds to decide how much we're gonna chase it. Just a little bit, or maybe more, more priority, or maybe we'll try to bid in an auction or, or something. But uh, it's very fast because other, otherwise, uh, the the usual SEO guy who, who buys domains they mm-hmm. open. Uh, seven different tabs with different services to check if the domain is indexed, to, to check the metrics here, to check the metrics there, to check the if there is not spam in the, uh, in the archive for the previous owners. All, all of that needs to be checked. Uh, our software cramps it all into a single screen, so it makes it much faster. And we just have trash, next, put price. And uh, this is actually something that helps the evaluators a lot. Otherwise, we won't need 15 people, but uh, 30. Ha! Uh-huh. No, that, so, that makes sense. So it's, a, it's a big win, uh, I can tell. 
That makes sense. So that that's interesting that they that in a matter of a couple of seconds, obviously they've been doing this for quite some time, that they're able to evaluate a domain as either a, a go or a no go on it, and then be able to you know price it accordingly. Yeah, go or no go is easy. For example, in this here, you know, this where you either chase the domain or don't chase it. Let's say there are no backers and no auctions. But in, in some uh, TLDs, like, like say UK, mm-hmm. you have so many back orders and different pricing and priority in our own catching that I think we divide the domains into seven different categories mm. by price. So category one, you chase with minimal priority. Category two, you chase with next to minimal priority. Category three, you chase with next to minimal priority and you place the cheapest back order. Category four, you place two more back orders, which are slightly more expensive. Yeah, and, and this, this is how you become effective. You know, if you, if you don't do this, you're losing, let's say, 10% of effectivity every day. Right. And, and it, adds it, up. it adds up very fast, yeah. <laughs> that adds up very, very fast. Uh, and so, that, so that's interesting then, just thinking about that model. And, you know, so it, it, it becomes very critical then to assess the right domains, get them priced accordingly and move them quickly as possible. Yeah, because in some places in the world, there's still uh, first come first serve back orders. So then you really need to move like 30, even 60 days before the drop. So you, you're, you're faster than, than the rest. Of course, most good domains get renewed if you get, uh, if you look that far behind and uh, it's it's uh, extra work that goes to waste, but it's better than uh, if someone places the first come first serve back order before you. Right. So you also have to come early and do extra work. And yeah, of course, most back orders are now doing auctions, but there are still some uh, weird, uh, weird countries where they didn't learn about auctions and they still do first come first serve back orders. <laughs> So then, like long term, you know, what's your vision for both edoms and SEO domains? Like, what do you hope to to achieve with both? Well, the the vision for uh, SEO domains is that we just need to sell our domains. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's the only vision uh, that that we need because because uh, we we have all of these domains. They have a good price for the right buyer. I mean, not for the right buyer, but maybe for twenty of the right buyers. Mm-hmm. It's not that they're waiting for this uh, single person. They're just good if you're in that industry and you're doing PBNs or 301 redirects or, or something like this. So we need to increase the sales there. We're, we will be launching an affiliate program soon and uh, also start to doing a blog and all of these other things, generating much more content and uh, also starting daily updates because right now we are updating once every 10 days on average. And uh, then the update, the update comes with, let's say, 700 new domains. And uh, you, you just get drowned in this list. If we update every day, we did a poll and our buyers said that they would prefer to look at the list every day and not get like domain evaluation fatigue when we update the, the list. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> because 700 domains <laughs> to evaluate at once is no one's favorite thing, uh, I'm sure. So yeah, we, we need to transition to daily updates, launch an affiliate, improve our uh, content, website, all of this. We're working on it. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, that There's not much a lot. It's just a domain selling machine. It's nothing special. Yeah. Well, considering EDOM's plans are much more interesting, what we have learned by looking at the, the GTOD industry, the dot-com and so on, is that the only way that now in this industry, this is quite saturated, which is an easy win, is if you are the registrar and you have valuable domains that expire, and then you can keep them or auction them, but we'll probably just keep them. Why auction them? Why? We can evaluate and keep them. The plan that we have is to have as much domains as possible under our management. So what we, what we, will, uh, so we have two plans. One is for domainers and one is for retail users. So we need as much domainers as possible to have domains, hopefully valuable ones under us. So if by any chance they leave them to expire, we can get them. And we are uh, determined to give them because if they let them expire, they, if, if uh, we keep the domain or it goes to go daddy auctions or drop catch, they wouldn't care. So they wouldn't lose anything, the domainers. But in turn, we, uh, we can give them every incentive possible. So we can give them renewal prices at cost or near cost. So for example, if Michael Mann comes to us with his half a million domains, we can give them the exact very same price. We wouldn't want to earn anything from renewals from mm. someone who has half a million domains. Also with our domains, 
we can uh, publish the whois if the domainer wants, which will make the domain much more findable by potential buyers. We can make the whois we are the registrar, so we can make the whois anytime they want. We can put any name servers they want. So the name servers may look like the NS1 domain is for sale dot something. NS2 domain is for sale. So uh, we'll try to make the best landing page in the world if they want to use it. No one will make any domainer use our landing page. They can use anything. We will encourage listing the domain everywhere in Sidu, after Nick, Dan. But right now, the marketplaces uh, that, are, that exist, I can say a few words about each. Uh, after Nick is great. I like them. They, they have uh, brokers that convert a lot of sales into good prices, but they take 20%. So right. And the, and, the, and the payment can be a bit slow. Uh, well, once, once you sell the domain, well, at, at least for us, we have a, a long, long cycle. So, so yeah, pay, payout can be slow, but that's not the huge problem. But like 20% 20, <laughs> 20 is uh, significant. Right. So uh, Dan, I really like Dan, really good service. Uh, there's not much to improve. They take only 9%. And Payout is pretty is quick. The service is perfect. I can on only say great words about everything they do. Uh, the, the, the thing is that we sell about the same domains, the same uh, number of domains, let's say .io, right. in them with the lender. So probably most come through the lender and at after Nick because of GoDaddy. So mm -hmm. after Nick sells a lot of domains just, be, just because of GoDaddy, especially in, we don't have .coms, but we do have a lot of .ios. So I can say for .io for sure that, that just after Nick is, is a must to have your domains list. There are a lot of sales, a lot of buy now. So in Dan, the problem is that they have a very good service, but they're still small. So if you put your lender there, okay. But if you don't have a lender, you don't have a lot of sales. And Sidu is uh, something in between, a bit lower commission. Uh, also, some sales come directly through Sidu. Uh, they have a few uh, annoying uh, stuff that, that can happen <laughs> there, like if, if the transaction uh, it's cancelled. You don't get the email of the buyer. Just like that, there's a small annoying thing. Uh, <laughs> no huge problem with Sidu. Just small, small annoying things. Uh, but the thing is that every uh, that everywhere you get charged some some commission. What right. we want to do is make a zero commission marketplace. And if it's zero commission, it has two ideas. First, you don't lose any money as a domainer. But the second thing is that you always know that we will be on your site because as a domainer, you want to sell the domain anywhere, right? right? You don't care in which marketplace. But as a marketplace which charges commission, the marketplace wants you to sell the domain exactly there and not directly from the buyer, not at another marketplace. So the, the incentive is a bit, not exactly the same. If, if we have a 0% commission, mm -hmm. then our incentive and the incentive in, in of the domainer is exactly aligned. We have no fallout whatsoever. We want the domainer to have a good service and sell the domain anywhere, and the domainer wants to sell the domain anywhere, which means that we can do nice stuff like show the domainer uh, full contact details of the buyer, which can never happen in, let's say, Sido or Afterney because they want, don't want to be right. bypassed naturally, you know, but we can do it. So we can improve the experience of the domainer in some technical ways, like revealing who is and uh, showing NS that the domain is for sale, but also in some other ways that would not be possible unless the, the commission is 0%. But there's one trick. You can only list the domains with us if you transfer into our registrar. Uh... So, you know, we have, two, we have two very good services, very good registrar for domainers, very good marketplace, but you can not use one or the other. They're, they can be used only combined because if you don't transfer the domains in, we right. don't get our pie by keeping good expiring domains. So that's basically the idea how sales trial works. So it's two very good things, but you can only use them together. So of course, it's a lot of trust is needed for, for someone to transfer the domains in. But we hope to build this trust over time by providing a very good service. And the thing is that we'll use sales trial for all of our portfolio. So all of our 50,000 domains, except maybe the ones that have parking revenue, will use the sales trial landing pages. So mm. we, improve, we will work to improve them because this conversion will be extremely important for us. And the, uh, the domainers will know that we'll put everything 
we have in in a in a very good sales chart experience because we will use sales chart for our own sales. In this case, we hope that good word of mouth will spread if the start is good, and maybe we can earn this trust that we needed for someone to transfer the entire portfolio in. Right. So, so sales chart is basically like a new generation domain marketplace, and very much like you said, it's zero uh, percent commissions, which is likely you know music to the ears of our listeners, especially those who are domain investors looking to sell their domains. And the only catch, if we could say there is a catch, is essentially. Uh, so for instance, I own a domain at GoDaddy.com, but if I wanted to use SellStar.com to sell or list this domain, I would then need to transfer from GoDaddy into, I guess, Edoms or SellStar. Yeah, uh, the, the, the icon accreditation is called Pool Domains, but it's, it's the old name of Edoms. So, okay. so yeah, ba- basically to our to our icon accreditation, what you have is cheaper renewals. Okay. Th- th- than GoDaddy. Even, even with the even with the discount club. Probably even with the discount club, uh, I can check what, what their price is, but we don't mind giving the exact cost price if it's about an, a large number of domains. Right. Well, right. For, for a smaller number, we're still considering it if we we'll keep some margin, but our point is strictly not to earn anything from renewals. So if we charge something above the very same cost price, it will be just to cover transaction fees and so on. So uh, we don't want to earn anything from renewals, but there's more good stuff. So if you are a buyer, for now, we were talking only about the seller side, the domainer side. Right. Let's now talk from the buyer side. If you are a buyer at Sidu after Nick, then what happens is that you get a slow transaction. Right. You get used some kind of escrow, which can result in uh, edit fees and delays. And at least 10% of the transactions, I think, fail. Why? Because there's no way for the marketplace to get the domain from the seller other than goodwill. That, that's, that's the truth. The domain may already be sold. It may be left to expire. It may no longer be there. The seller might be unresponsive. We, we, we had a case in Afternic, ironically, with the domain that would later we chose to be sales trial. We, we wanted, instead of sales, mm-hmm. sales trial, we wanted, wanted mark, marketzero.com, which was a good one. So we negotiated uh, in Afternic through a, a broker to, to buy this one. I think the price was a thousand or something. A- and the seller agreed to the price. We paid, nothing happened. 20 days later, the broker gave up and said the transaction won't happen. And this was after the price was negotiated with the seller. So the seller was obviously there. Still, mm. there's no, no way to enforce this transaction. What happens if you buy the domain in a sales trial? Well, the, the other, the buyer part, part of sales trial, because sales trial is strictly a brand targeted to domainers. The other part would be called na- nameyou.com. So if the buyer comes in nameyou.com and buys the domain, they get the domain immediately. When submitting your buy now or uh, payments after a negotiation, you can already set your name servers uh, right this moment. Then you okay. cannot transfer out and then we clear out any possibilities of uh, fraud payments with credit card and so on. So you cannot transfer out immediately, but you can start using the domain this very second. And there will be no failed transactions because all domains in name you are owned by, they are not owned, they are managed by us at Salesstra. So th- there are no failed transactions and there's instant delivery. It, it's like a shop. It's nothing like the experience you, you get at say, Sidu, where, where you buy a domain and if it's not fast transfer or something, then you wait until it's working hours and then Sidu support, message the, the seller to get a transfer code, then transfer code. And it's one, two days at least, usually until you get the domain. With us, it's different. You, you pay and one minute later, you have the domain in your panel. You can set name servers huh. and you can start using the domain right away. And there's a guarantee that this transaction will happen. So it's actually the, the, the way that the domain selling through marketplaces has been happening so far is is a broken is a broken model. It's slow. It doesn't have uh, 100% delivery of the domain even after payment. And for the seller, it's also slower to to get their money. Right. And and as I said, the incentive of the marketplace and the incentive of the seller, the domainer, they diverge a bit. While the idea is that they should be exactly the same incentive. 
That's interesting. So you have the domain investors that are going to focus really on managing their domains, entering their domains using sellstraw.com, but then buyers aren't going to go to sellstraw.com. Buyers are actually going to go to Namio, so N-A-M-I-O.com to yes. actually make the purchase. Yes. And so now once a domain buyer makes the purchase, do they have to keep the domain with you all as a registrar or can they transfer to another registrar? How does that work? They can transfer after we have confirmed that uh, there is no risk of fraud in the payment because that uh, is the only risk for this model. That is true. Now, I guess, has SalesStraw launched yet or? Uh, the website is being built and it's about uh, halfway ready. But, okay. but when it's ready, maybe two or three months, we'll. First, we'll have just our domains and uh, some registry premiums like MGTODs and so on. And then after we see that this uh, works well, we will launch officially for uh, all domainers. But uh, you can already uh, sign up for the start at, uh, at salesstrar.com. And I think we have about 150 uh, people signed, including some, uh, some famous domainers. Okay. So yeah. So listeners, yeah, you'll certainly want to head over to salesstraw.com, uh, enter in your email address and, you know, so that you don't miss the launch of it. And then I guess in, in terms of, of Namio, like, is it up or? Namio is just a copy of Salesstraw at the moment. Okay. But uh, we're building up a very, very nice website there with good lenders and good search. Gotcha. So it's, uh, I, I love them. They really have a good lender, but they, they don't have the the best uh, search. So search can be improved. I re- really like the search of name bio. So that's where we, we got some ideas from. Nice. The Dan, Dan can really improve the, the search, I think. For the, right. right. Now, let me ask you this. Bio. So then in terms of, of bringing eyes to these marketplaces, like I... I'm assuming that you're going to have to have some sort of strategy to be able, obviously there's after Nick, uh, which has a pretty wide network in and of itself through GoDaddy and other, you know, registrars as well. And then there's Sidu, and then there's obviously Dan is the new kid on the block. So then I guess you have some sort of strategy in terms of going out to draw in buyers for domain, you know, investors to be able to sell their domains, I'm assuming. Well, the, the first stage is to get a very good landing page. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the good thing is uh, the good thing that we'll, that we'll have on, on this part. I mean, every, every, I, I think everyone will love the concept of a uh, sales trial being a cheap registrar with, uh, with good renewals and uh, easy. Uh, we can also, if you use our name servers, you can easily point a- anywhere, switch between um, between different landing pages, let's say our Sidu after Nick Dan, and all, and also if you if you're a big domainer, obviously you know people at all marketplaces, and verification is not a problem for you. But if you're a small domainer and you're just starting, then verification is a is a pain. But 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 veri- verification can be done with TXT records, which we can send in our in our DNS. So then verification is no longer a problem. With for example, uh, if you ever tried verifying domains in Flipper. It's a real pain. There, there's no if, if you don't if you don't have TXT records, you know, verifying domains in, in the Flipper listing is just a nightmare. Yeah, you're dead uh, in the water. So uh, we we can help with uh, with the TXT records, which will help verification. But also something that is very important that we can help is that we have a completely customizable landing page, because you, we ha- we have a lot of domains in emerging markets, let's say in Argentina and Chile. Uh, and they speak Spanish there, like only Spanish. They don't speak any English. Hmm. I, I mean, maybe one person in 10 speaks English, but that's not a lot, really. So you, you would prefer a landing page in Spanish. So, so what, what we have done in sales trial is that you divide your domains into groups. And a group can have, let's say, a single domain or 10 domains or 100 or 1,000 domains. And let's say you make a group that says Spanish-speaking countries domains. And for this group, you can set a customized landing page that, that, that has all the keywords like buy this domain or make offer or anything. It, 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 can, it, it can have it different word on the different call to actions right. on the landing page. And uh, also you can have a different background, you know, this lovely background that Dan has. Yeah. I, like the, I like the idea. And when we, when we listed our half a million domains at Dan, we put a very nice, typically Swedish background because they were only Swedish domains with a, ah. like uh, a sweet, a, a sweet something uh, like a Swedish house and some Swedish nature. 
But okay, let's say you try to sell a domain in Argentina and they, they see something that is very far away from Argentinian as a background. So this will not really build trust. But, but, but if you, let's say, put a, a photo of Buenos Aires or your Argentinian domains, it will build more trust because it will seem more local. So we'll have the background. Would, you will be able to change the background and actually all of the keywords except the domain that are on the, on the landing page are in custom field. So you can change the background. You can change the words. And also you will be able to change the currency into a local currency in some stage later, which will further, further increase trust. So if you're selling .com, uh, just .com domains, you can divide uh, your domains by niche. And let's say your travel domains, you can put a travel background and your uh, medical domains, you can put a medical background. So it's, you can still use this. But if you are selling domains in different countries, or it can be a .com in Spanish, a Spanish keyword, let's say. Mm. So, so then you have Spanish buyers. And then you, uh, and then you can put Spanish, uh, Spanish text on the landing page. It, it's entirely customizable. It's, this is very important because we have such a diverse portfolio that we need this for us. And also many other domainers will be able to really tweak their portfolio and increase the conversion. Because right now, let's say in Sido uh, or Afternic or even Done, which is the, the best landing page, I think, uh, you don't have any, any freedom to customize. Right. So then let me ask you something else that just kind of crossed my mind is, so you, you mentioned in terms of, you know, custom, customization or personalization towards um, a native language. Like, do you, and, and for the most part, most listeners, or at least most of my listeners, are likely going to focus on EnglishWord.com domains, uh, whether it's one word, multi-word, or you know whatever. It, it's typically going to be English. But I guess now, have you witnessed or experienced, uh, I guess, a wide acceptance of native language investing? So you know, um, let's take a, a Spanish word.com or Spanish word, you know, dot cctld. Like, have you noticed that? there is a market for domain investors? There's an end user market. Mm -hmm. You can be sure of that, but I don't know if, how many investors are there in, uh, in these countries. Maybe there are like 10 domainers in Spain. I don't know, like <laughs> not, 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 not so much. Not, right. not, not so, I, I mean, serious professional domainers, like not, not doing it right. hobby or not holding any domains from 15 years ago. But there's a huge advantage in, in the CCTLDs, really. Uh, so? It's a renewal is cheaper. So for, so, for example, in Spain, the renewal is uh, four euro. So this wow. is like five, less than five dollars. Yeah, five, six dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's cheaper. And in Italy, it's uh, 3.30. And uh, in UK, uh, so it's in it, I'll say in dollars because uh, the audience will right. understand it. So, so in Italy, it's like four dollars. In UK, it's like five dollars. In DE, it's less than two dollars, the renewal. So in NL, uh, in the Netherlands, it's three point five dollars. In uh, in Belgium, it's I think five dollars. So it's almost all of Europe. It's cheaper than .dot com. So you can have a lot of domains. You can call it like not the best domain, but let's say free letters or you know free letter in CCTLD is not something very very special unless it's let's say uh, D or co UK. Mm -hmm. Like like for example, in uh, a free letter in, in most European countries costs between. Uh, 10 and 50 dollars like actual price not the price you will charge an end user of course but the the actual value is some somewhere there depending on the letters the country and so on of, of course in if it's three good letters in a bigger country let's say uh france or spain it's it's more but still it's not that much but imagine if you have a four dollar renewal how many free letters you can buy and keep forever you know it's right Right. Half of half of the dot com. So, you know, all of the expenses are suddenly cut in half. So uh, this is a big advantage uh, in, in Europe for domainers. And actually, uh, it's not that easy if you're, let's say, in, uh, you're in UK. Most UK domainers have small companies that are not VAT registered. Mm. I know uh, you Americans don't have to worry about, uh, <laughs> about this, but in Europe we have VAT, so 20%. More, more expenses on everything. When, when they have uh, companies that are not VAT registered, they have to pay 20% VAT for renewals. But on the other hand, uh, the VAT in Europe works. So we as a Bulgarian VAT registered company, 
uh, we don't charge uh, VAT to other uh, companies. So they can pay to us and then we can renew the domains with the UK registry nominate and we won't pay any VAT because we and nominate are VAT registered and this is like import export stuff. So uh. we don't just charge VAT, but also because they are companies after all, not, not people, we mm -hmm. don't charge VAT either. So no VAT is paid in the end. So actually every UK domainer can come to Salesforce and pay 20% less for renewals. That's awesome. And this holds for almost all uh, European countries. And also okay. the good thing about, let's say, UK, Sweden, Switzerland, and other European countries is that transfers are free, no renewal and free of charge. So uh, it's very easy for domainers to move their portfolio into sales drawer if it's from the CCTODs because they won't have to pay for the renewal. But there are a lot of things in the CCTODs that make sales drawer an even better idea than with the dot-com. But with, but with the dot-com also, it's also uh, quite good, especially if you have a lot of domains. For example, if you're Michael Mann and you have half a million domains, then you, you, we can just do the very signed bulk transfer right. without renewal and it will be like five or 10 cents per domain. Now, what about somebody that has uh, a thousand that wants to, you know, say, hey, I want to give you guys a shot? Oh, well, then you, you can just uh, do batches closely before renewal. Yeah. So you don't, uh, you don't dig into your cash flow too much. And right. you can do, let's say, a hundred this month, one month before renewal and so on. And uh, the transfers will be at the same cost price for us. So. Gotcha. Because you're going to renew them likely anyway. So you might as well just, instead of renewing yeah. them with whoever the current registrar is, then ultimately transfer them to you. And that's the renewal for the next year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wrapping up here, what would be your advice to someone starting to invest in SEO or CCTLD domains? Like where should they start? Uh, I think they should start with the demand. Uh, it's very easy, you know, uh, it has happened, of course, to me too, but uh, <laughs> a story I have heard from all domainers that didn't start in the 2000 year, but let's say 2010 or like at a normal time uh, after the good domains were already taken is that they bought bad domains and they learned in the process of losing money after they bought uh, worthless domains, uh, none, of, none of which sold. It has happened to me in certain CCTODs too. Uh, where I thought there was a market uh, somewhere and there's no market. For, for example, we bought uh, maybe 100 domains in Colombia, uh, uh, the country, .com.co, so their local CCTOD, .co is for the world and .com.co is for Colombia. And we have amazing keywords in English, amazing keywords in Spanish, nothing, like not a single lead even. Wow. Uh, like it, it uh, and we sell a lot of domains in uh, similar countries like Chile. Chile is a good market, but Colombia, zero. So you need to talk to someone in the country because if, if you open name bio and uh, search for .com.co, there will be like 10 or 20 sales, which can be like brand protection. And it's like not always uh, the best place to get acquainted with the market. But if you ask domainers in, in a small country or poor country, they will always tell you there, that there is no market. But, <laughs> but, but if you ask maybe people from like the internet industry uh, as a whole, let's say uh, e-commerce owners, like people mm -hmm. who, who do the actual investing, not the selling, maybe they will give a, a better picture. But without asking, I would not advise investing in any CCTODs as uh, it may become the Colombia. Also, it's very different in some countries. English keywords are super welcome, like in Romania. We have actually our largest CCTOD portfolio is in Romania. We have 10,000 domains there. They, they had a, the thing where the domains never expired. And then uh, two years ago, they expired all at once. So there was a huge drop, which we got a lot of domains from. This is the reason, not that the Romanian market is some, somehow better than, than other markets. Uh, so it's not related to, to the actual marketing quality of domains. It was just a situational things. So for example, in Romania, Romanian keywords are, are good. English keywords, not so good, but still good, still have value. So let's say between the same value as the Romanian keyword to maybe 50% of that value. But if you go to, let's say, a Latin American country, English keywords are worth like nothing. No one speaks English. No one uses them. There's no tradition of having websites on English keyword domain. They're worth next to nothing. We have in Argentina, we have amazing keywords, keywords like betting, you know, you know like these super top keywords, no worth, no leads, nothing. Maybe it will change in the future, so, so we'll keep the best ones, but it's right. quite easy, quite easy to make the mistake of buying English keywords in a CCTLD, a mistake uh. we have made many times. Some, <laughs> in some countries, 
it works. It's it's getting better over time, I think. But in most countries, it's still a no go. So this is why the first big CCTLD warning about the, the ones who invest in premium domains. Uh, if you invest in a SEO or or something, you you need a buyer for SEO domains. Uh, the SEO domain has a few potential buyers, people doing SEO in that niche in that country. So if you don't have these buyers, the domain will just stay and slowly degrade in value. So if you want to invest in SEO domains, it's good to have a buyer to be well connected in the in the SEO industry. There are a few domainers I know that are well connected in the SEO industry because they are doing stuff with SEO and so on. So, so you need to uh, actually, it's good to have a buyer. Sido and Afternick and Dan will not help you in selling uh, SEO domains. Of course, you might list there because miracles happen, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's surely not the, the, play, the main channel to do this because the reason is quite simple. Whoever buys SEO domains needs to be able to export them all or an, and analyze them internally or be able to sort them in the website. That's one, one of the two. Best will be to have both, but at least one. So in GoDaddy Auctions, for example, you have this, single click download of the whole list and first you can uh, download and uh, evaluate the domains internally but also aggregators do it like uh, domcop and expireddomains.net and and they have the seo analysis so you can go directly into domcop state or expireddomains.net uh, i think better and free uh, to an, to analyze to sort by uh, majestic referring domains and then just uh, toss away all the domains with no links and then maybe analyze the others uh, manually and this is what uh, thousands of people do every day. So if you list your domains in Dan, Sedu, and After Nick, it's not going to work because you don't have a one-click download of all domains in After Nick, Dan, and Sedu. So it's harder to, for buyers to download and investigate internally. And also what you uh, tend to do is to do make offer in these places. And if you do make offer, uh, I can tell you that almost no SEO buyer will have the time to, let's right. say, uh, get 10 domains they like at make offer and actually go and submit offers and negotiate. These people are just too busy. They are affiliates mostly. They earn a lot of money. Right. So they are, if they're the day job at a, at a big company that does SEO, they're not motivated. And if they're affiliates and they earn a lot of money and they're motivated, then they don't have the time. Right. So you, you should find a way where your domains are publicly listed as buy now and some place that people visit. So in time, we have turned SEO.domains into one of the places that people visit, SEO buyers, but not all. We still have a lot, of, uh, a lot to grow in the popularity that, uh, that we need to, to have one day. So the, the main problems with the SEO domains is not that you cannot find SEO domains that are better than the mostly hand drag and auction you know, buy now for SEO. You don't have that much. Uh, but the problem is the selling. So your, your clients are an identifier identifiable, busy, underground affiliates and offset that are, <laughs> that are super busy. You know, they, right. they value their time a lot. So unless you make some kind of newsletter or something that they'll be able to just look at the domains for a minute and, and decide, it will be very hard to sell. Or you need to have connections in the SEO industry. Uh, we have a lot of cases where we sold the domains four years ago for, let's say, $200. Then the domain expired because some the buyer let it expire and now three or four years later we catch the domain again and we sell it again for 600 or something right did, did the domain get better of course not because it, it actually it lost <laughs> things it's the other way around right but, but but what changed we have access to more buyers it's a very slow growth in the sales i mean it it, it will take like a month or two to evaluate seo domains more or less and uh it's not that hard i mean you do have to dedicate like a month right. or something, uh, do, doing it all day long. It, it's not easy, but it's much easier than evaluating premium domains. Correct. Definitely right. much easier. Premium domains, you will need years, not, not a month. So uh, SEO domains, not so hard to evaluate. Catching and bidding at auctions depends on the TLDs and so So I won't talk about it. It's highly specific. Not so hard to evaluate. Possible to catch. Hard to say. That's our experience. Because the, 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 land, the landing page does not do for SEO domains what it does for premiums. For premiums, it's almost everything. For SEO domains, it will be like maybe 10 to 20% of your sales should be, should be. The rest should be a list, a newsletter, thousands of subscribers, 
connections with uh, regular SEO buyers. So that's the thing. That, that's the main reason that we're big in the, the SEO domains industry, small industry, because uh, it's not very easy to ramp everything. So the, the right. drop catching, the evaluation, the sales, it's a big mix. Again, that's why we have 70 people. It's a slow, slow, largely uh, an open ground right. where anyone can come and compete. It's not too late. It's not like the, the premiums, let's say. But it's a long way. It, right. it seemed very easy when we started. We said, okay, we get the domains. Now we get all the good domains. Where are the buyers? And there are no buyers. So. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, last but not least, I mean, is there anything else that you'd like to share with listeners, like how they can get in contact with you? The good thing is that my name is absolutely unique. I don't think anyone else in the world is uh, <laughs> <laughs> has the Kaylin. same name. So, so it's super easy to find my, uh, uh, my LinkedIn for sure. Uh, my Facebook is also with this name. Uh, you can write me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter. I'm not that active, but LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, I do check uh, regularly. So you, you, you can contact me. You can subscribe for uh, sales trial. Uh, you you can take a look if you're curious about SEO domains and how their prices go. You can check uh, SEO domains because you, you can check the prices in the website there by now. So you can immediately uh, be uh, much more, uh, you can have a lot of, of data about what drives the, the price of SEO domains up. Certainly. And so with that, we're out of time. So Kaylin, thank you again for joining us today and sharing your entrepreneurial journey, as well as just your breadth of knowledge in terms of the CCTLD marketplace, as well as uh, sharing the upcoming uh, 0% commission domain marketplace, sellstar.com, and just your overall SEO knowledge. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.